Hello everyone, welcome back to another examples video and in this video we will be covering a few examples regarding section 5.3 um, which was on exploring angles over 90 degrees and on standard position and initial terminal arm all that stuff we'll cover that in these next couple of examples so let's get right into it. Number one it says Jake draws a special triangle in quadrant 3 and determines that tan of 180 plus theta, which is going to be our principal angle, principal angle, equals 1. So if we draw, before we start the question, let's just draw our scenario. We have our Cartesian plane, right? And it says in quadrant 3, which is this quadrant right here, um, Jake draws a special triangle. So we have our initial arm, right? In our terminal arm will be somewhere here's our uh, uh, our origin and our terminal arm will be somewhere in this quadrant going this way right and I'll make it a little bit more this way and it says Jake draws a special triangle so he just draws a triangle with the x-axis making this 90 degrees and this whole angle up to here from the initial arm to the terminal arm is 180 plus theta, which is our principal angle, okay? Um, it, and uh, A asks us to determine theta, which is, in this case, as we can see, we go from the initial arm all the way to 180, and we pass it by an amount theta. So theta is actually going to be our related acute angle right in here, right? And it tells us in the question that tan of the principal angle equals 1. So we know we're going to have our opposite over um, our opposite uh, over adjacent. It's going to be a ratio of 1. So if we take this triangle, right? Oh, let me take that out, this circle. If we take this triangle kind of out of the question and we just draw it by itself, we have something like this. Nope, not like that. We have something like this, right? We have a right angled triangle. And if we remember um, how we found find out the uh, signs of each ratio, we say that tan of our principal angle equals plus or minus tan of our um, related acute angle. Acute angle. So in this case, tan of 180 plus theta is going to be equal to plus or minus tan theta, and we're going to have to figure out that plus or minus later on in the question. But that means when we take out this triangle, we can call this theta, and we can evaluate for the same ratio within this triangle because we know tan of the principal angle is going to be the same as tan of the related acute angle and we might just need to change the sign, right? It's, it's either going to be a 1 or a negative 1, right? So uh, we have here tan of theta equals 1, right? So if we keep going up here, we have a plus or minus tan theta equals 1, OK? And so that means our uh, opposite and our adjacent are going to have a ratio between them of 1. So we can just say they're 1 and 1. Right? It could be 2 and 2, 3 and 3, or they could be 1 and 1. And because we have 1 and 1, we can say that to finish our special triangle, which it says in the question that we do have a special triangle, um, the hypotenuse, if we remember our special triangles, is going to be square root 2. So if we remember our special triangles, um, we know that this special triangle in, uh, specifically is going to have one 90 degree angle and two 45 degree angles. So just from looking, and analyzing our special triangle, we know that for A, our theta is going to be 45 degrees, right? Because we drew out our special triangle, and it's either the one with 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and a 90 degrees, or the one with 245 degrees and 90 degrees, which in this case it is because our tan of theta is going to be 1 or negative 1, right? So that's A. We're done A just from analyzing the information we have. Now B is going to take some calculation. 
what are the exact values of tan theta, so tan of our related acute angle, sine of 180 plus theta, and cosine of 180 plus theta. Okay, so let's deal with tan theta first. And as we can see, we took out our special triangle up here, and we can see that tan theta, of course, is going to equal opposite over adjacent, which is going to be 1, right, as we can see from our special triangle up there. Now, if we want to find out um, sine of 180 plus theta, we need to find out what sine of theta is and then figure out if we need to put a plus or a minus sign in front of it. So we're going to have sine of 180 plus theta equal to plus or minus sine of theta. Um, and we kind of have to remember what signs are positive and what signs are negative in each quadrant. And so we're here dealing with quadrant three. And if we actually look back to tan of the principal angle equals a positive one, that means that in quadrant three, right, tan of the principal angle is going to be positive tan of the related acute angle, right? And we can verify this by looking back at our Cartesian plane, and we see that this side of our um, drawn triangle is going to be in the negative x direction. This side is going to be in the negative y direction. That means the tan ratio, which is opposite over, hypo over adjacent, is going to be negative y over negative x. And the, uh, the negatives are going to cancel out, and it's going to give us a positive ratio. So we can see that in this quadrant, we actually have a positive tan um, ratio using our related IQ angle, right? But now we're dealing with sine, right? Right here, now we're dealing with sine. Sine of 180 plus theta is going to equal plus or minus sine theta. So we need to remember again, in quadrant 3, is sine um, negative uh, or uh, positive, right? And we can actually just test for this if, um, oh, I kind of erased this negative x and negative y, but if I put them back here, right, negative x direction, negative y direction, and we have the hypotenuse, which is always going to be positive. So if we take the sine, right, of our principal angle, it's going to be the same as the sine of theta, right? And we, if we take the, th uh, the sine of theta from this triangle, actually, if we take the sine of theta from this triangle up here, right, and we write out the values just so we can use x, y, and z, and r, right, sine of theta by itself, it's going to be y over r because it's opposite over hypotenuse. But once we go back to the question, we need to um, consider if we're going in the negative x direction and the negative y direction, which we are in this case, we are going in the negative y direction. So this y is actually going to turn negative. And so this sine ratio is going to be negative. So we're going to have a negative sign here, right? And if we just keep evaluating sine of 180 plus theta, it's going to equal negative sine. And what's our related acute angle? We already figured out is 45. Okay, and if we keep going, 180 plus theta is going to equal, and if we remember our special triangles, we know that sine of 45, it's going to be negative 1 over square root 2, or it's going to be, sorry, it's going to be 1 over square root 2, but we have a negative sign, um, and 1 over square root 2 is the same thing as saying, if we multiply it by square root 2 over square root 2, we're going to have negative square root 2 over 2. And that's sine of 180 plus theta. Okay. Now we need to evaluate for cos theta. So I might just erase this sine question and the tan so we can have a little space for cosine. Okay. So I'll be right back. Okay. And we are back. Now let's do cosine of 180 plus theta, which is going to equal, again, plus or minus cos of our related acute angle, which is theta. Okay. Now again, we need to figure out if our cosine ratio is going to be negative or positive. So if we go back to this triangle that we have taken outside the question, right, and we are just evaluating with positive numbers first, if we take the cosine of theta, right, cosine of theta, we're going to get 
x over r because adjacent over hypotenuse. But now once we go back to the question, we got to see if we're going in the negative x direction or the negative y direction, whichever corresponds, right? In this case, we are going in the negative x direction. So this x value is going to be negative, right? We're going backwards. We're going horizontally left. So this whole cosine ratio is going to be negative. So therefore, this is going to be a negative sign. Okay. Now we just need to evaluate. So cosine of our principal angle, which is 180 plus theta, is going to equal negative cosine of 45, which is our related IQ angle, which we found out um, on uh, A, part A. Now if we keep going, if we remember now our special triangle, which I'll actually draw over here, which I, uh, I kind of didn't draw um, for sign, but I should have. So here we go. This is our special triangle, 245 degrees, a one on one and a square root two, right? So if we take the cosine of 45, either we can choose either 45 or um, adjacent is going to be one and our hypotenuse is square root two. So we have one over square root two, which again is the same thing. If we multiply by square root two over square root two, we're going to be left with a final answer of um, a negative square root two over two, same as the sine ratio, right? Because we're using, uh, we have a special triangle over here, right? So our cosine and sine ratios are kind of going to be the same number, at least they don't have to be the same, um, sign always because it depends on the quadrant. But if uh, we have a special triangle with a 45 degree angle, we know our sine and cosine ratios are going to be the same. Okay. So let's move on. Here we have question two. It says, what angles between zero degrees and 360 degrees make the expression sine of 45 degrees equals sine of theta true? So in this question, it's asking us to find theta, which makes this equation true. So obviously the first one we see is that theta can equal 45 degrees, obviously, right? So that's our first angle. Um, and now we kind of have to draw our Cartesian plane. Um, and it asks us, so sine of 45 degrees, we can take it as our related acute angle, right? Because it's an acute angle. And so we need to find out in which quadrant, right? This related acute angle is positive, right? For the large principal angle, right? So if we have some principal angle here, right? Is sine of this principal angle going to be the same value as sine of 45 and positive, right? So first thing we want to look for is which quadrants sine, the sine ratio is positive, right? So if we take a look at each quadrant, which again, in the next theory video, we're going to learn the cast rule, which is going to make this very, very simple. Um, but for now, if we draw a, tri a triangle in each quadrant, we can clearly see where the sine ratio is going to be positive, right? So here we're going in the positive y direction, positive x direction. Here we're going in the positive y direction, negative x direction, direction, negative y direction, and negative y direction, right? So in the first quadrant, quadrant one, um, sine of theta, right, is going to be always y over r, right? And r is going to be our hypotenuse, right? So for each terminal arm, right, we have an angle going to it. I'm not going to draw every angle because it's going to um, congest the question too much, but sine of theta is going to be y over r, right? So we have to find out where in which quadrant y over r is a positive ratio. And if we take a look back at our Cartesian plane, we can just look for the quadrant where y is positive. So here we see y is negative, here we see y is negative, but in quadrant two, y is positive, and in quadrant one, y is positive. So we know that these are the quadrants we need to look for an angle, right? That gives the same ratio as sine of 45 degrees, because we know that it's gonna be positive. The principal angle is gonna be positive because remember, sine of the principal angle which is 45, uh, which is a theta in this case, it's going to be plus or minus 
theta, which is our related acute angle, right? And so we just kind of need to look for which quadrant, you know, um, the sign of the principal angle is going to be positive, right? Because we know, um, what's it called? The, um, we know that the related acute angle will always be positive, right? Because we just take the triangle out of the question, we draw it out, and we evaluate our related acute angle with positive values, positive side lengths, but our principal angle is what's going to change because we need to consider which direction we're going in. Negative Y, negative X, all that stuff. So we can get rid of these triangles, right? Because we know that our sine ratios are going to be negative in these zones. Oh, right? Negative, negative. So we're just going to work in quadrant two and quadrant one. So we'll draw an initial, an initial arm, a terminal arm here, and a terminal arm here. So we have our first data, data one, and our second data, data two, right? And in the first quadrant, remember, we don't have a related acute angle because our principal angle is a related acute angle, right? Because the angle to the terminal arm is already acute. And as we can notice from the question, this 45 degrees is our first theta value. So theta one is going to be 45 degrees, right? Sine of 45 degrees is equal to sine of 45 degrees. That's pretty intuitive. Now let's find out what theta two is. This is our other value of theta that will make this equation true. Okay. So how do we do that? We want to look for this related acute angle, right? So we draw our little triangle and we want to look for um, a related acute angle, actually a related acute angle, we know what, what it's gonna be because remember, um, sine of our related acute angle has to be the sine, sorry, plus or, hold on, let me redraw that the other way. Sine of our principal angle, theta two, is gonna equal to sine of the related acute angle plus or minus sine of the related acute angle, right? And, and since we have to find kind of like um, the same ratio, a sine of 45 degrees, which is gonna equal, if we remember our special triangle, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, right? One, one, square root two. Sine of 45 degrees is going to give us 1 over square root 2 or uh, square root 2 over 2, right? So we need to find what principal angle gives us that same ratio, right? And how we do that is we find the um, related acute angle that gives us the ratio of 1 over square root 2. And then using simple math, 180 minus our related acute angle, we can find our principal angle because we know that sine of our principal angle will give us positive will, will equal will be equal to the same thing as sine of the related acute angle because we're in quadrant two and the sine ratio of any principal angle will be positive, right? So what angle, right? What acute angle is gonna give us the ratio of one over square root two? Or well, we already know it here is 45. So sine of 45 is going to give us a ratio of one over square root two and sine of our principal angle theta two is going to equal sine of 45 degrees obviously that's what we're trying to find so since we know our related acute angle now all we need to do to find theta two is equate that to 180 right which is all the way to uh the negative x-axis right 180 minus our related acute angle beta which we just found out by just evaluating the question that is 45 is going to equal our second principal angle, right? So our second pr uh, principal angle that's going to make this equation true, it's going to equal 180 minus 45, which theta two is going to give us 135, right? And there's our second value. Therefore, theta equals 45 degrees or 135 degrees.
And that's our final answer. And if we want to check, right, we take this as our principal angle, right? We evaluate for beta, which if we reverse it, now it's going to be 180 minus the principal angle, right? Which is going to give us 45 degrees. We take the sine ratio of beta, and if it gives us 1 over square root 2, our answer is correct because it's going to equal the left side of this equation we have up here, right? So that's how you can check, and that's it. Let's move on. Okay, last question here. This is pretty much the same thing, but using the tan ratio. So if we draw out our Cartesian plane, right, and our little triangles, pretty bad triangles, right? Um, we're going to have a positive y here, x, a positive x here, and r, and r, positive y, negative x, negative y, r, r, negative y. So we know that tan of any principal angle is going to equal opposite over adjacent, which if we take this, right, or any angle, other principal angle, let's just take this one first. Uh, opposite over adjacent is going to be y over x, right? So the quadrants that make this ratio uh, positive, right, because we need a positive in this question, as it says here, right, tan of the principal, so actually as it says here, my bad, tan of our principal angle theta, which we need to find out, is going to equal positive tan of 30 degrees, which um, which uh, we know from last question is going to be our related acute angle, right, in each quadrant. So what uh, when does uh, y over x become positive? When y and x are positive, or y and x are negative, right? So in this quadrant, right, our tan ratio of theta is going to be y over x, so that's positive. In this quadrant, our tan ratio is going to be y over negative x, so that's not going to work. That's going to be a negative ratio. Our, in quadrant 3, we're going to have negative y, and you can't really see there because I drew that, over negative x. These are going to cancel out, so this will become positive. So in quadrant 3, we're going to have a positive 10 ratio, and in the last quadrant, we're going to have negative y over x, and that's going to give us a negative ratio. So the quadrants that we need to be working in right now are quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. Okay? So let's get rid of quadrant two and four. So we don't need them. Let's get rid of these things. Right? Let's redraw this. We have our initial arm here, our first terminal arm, our second terminal arm. Right? This is going to be theta one. This is going to be theta two. And here, we're going to have a related acute angle. And again, in the first quadrant, we don't need one because it is the principal angle. And we're going to draw our little triangles here. Right? And again, from last question, we said that tan of 30 degrees is going to be the same as tan of 30 degrees. So theta 1, which is in quadrant 1. So we know that theta 1, right, is going to be 45 degrees. Sorry, not 45, that's from the last question, 30 degrees, All right? Um, and now we got to find theta 2, which is a principal angle that stops at a terminal arm at the third quadrant, right? Um, and we're going to have a negative y and a negative x and an r. But if we take this triangle out of the question here for a sec, we can just evaluate <coughs> using our positive values, right? So we have beta, which is our related acute angle, um, our 90 degrees, and we have um, r, x, and y, which are going to be positive because we're just taking that triangle out to evaluate it, right? And as we could, as we know from the last question, our beta is going to be 30 degrees. Why? Because um, the tan 
of the principal angle, theta 2, it's going to equal positive because we're now we're in quadrant 3 and we figured out quadrant 3. We're going to have a positive tan ratio. It's going to be positive tan of, of beta, right? And tan of um, theta 2 needs to be the same as tan of 30. So therefore, tan of beta 2 needs to be equal to tan of 30. So beta is going to be 30, right? It's just, re it's just basically rewriting this first expression with theta 2 and beta are related at Q angle, right? And we know tan of 30 degrees, if we write our special triangle up here, like we did in the last question, now we're going to have a 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Across from the 60, we have a square root 3. Across from the 30, we have a 1. And a 2 is the hypotenuse. So tan of 30 is going to be opposite over adjacent. And we're going to have 1 over square root 3 or square root 3 over 3, right? But we'll just keep it as this. And we're going to have positive 1 over square root 3. So we need, again, theta 2 value. That gives us a positive 1 over square root 3. And if we go to the third quadrant, it will give us a positive tan ratio as we figured it out at the beginning of the question. So we know now that tan of theta 2, we could positive tan of 30 degrees. Again, it's just re rewriting the uh, first equation that we have. And so since we know now that um, beta is 30 degrees, we can figure out theta 2 by simply saying that theta 2 is equal to 180 plus beta this time because again we go from our initial arm I'll do this in blue past 180 oh that's really bad I'm gonna erase this we go from our initial arm past 180 and we pass 180 until the terminal arm by beta by our related AQ angle by that distance of an angle right so our theta 2 our complete angle from initial to terminal arm is going to be 180 plus that related AQ angle and so we know that related, the related acute angle is 30, so we're going to do 180 plus 30, which is going to give us theta 2 is equal to 210 degrees. Okay, that's our second angle. Therefore, our theta value that makes 10 of 30 degrees equals 10 of theta true is going to be either 30 degrees or 210 degrees. And that's our final answer. Okay guys, and that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these examples were useful, but again, go to the textbook and do the questions that were on the chapter outline in the theory video, and I'll see you guys in the next theory video.